In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the ultimate, and I mean Pocket Pair should probably delete this location from the game because it's so good ultimate main base location in the entire game. In this spot, you have access to eight ore nodes, six coal nodes, plenty of room for all of your production lines, including sphere, weapon, and item production, as well as everything else you need for unlimited endgame resources. Except for sulfur, but your boy Astagon, well... Let's just say he's got that one covered. More detail on that later in the video. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about where it's located, the infrastructure in the base itself needed to get everything going, tips on the general layout and all of the broken pals that you're going to need for a smooth operation, including methods to get them early. If you finally realize that Dig Toys is just terrible and you're ready for an actual endgame mining base, this is going to be your guide to get it done. Okay, so where is this base located? If you open your map and you look at the Plateau of Beginnings for reference, it's going to be just slightly northwest of the Plateau of Beginnings. The coordinates are 188 and negative 39. Now, as a general rule, whenever you find a spot and it looks like it could be main base location material, don't touch anything. Get off of your mount, recall your pals, get completely naked, remove all of your weapons, and make sure you don't mine any of the nodes or any of the resources that you see on the map because if you do that and you do destroy them and you end up building on top of them they will not respawn the idea is to build around everything that you want to farm so that you can have your base operating and have these respawn every day when they respawn so you can farm them over and over again a best practice is to find where you think the center of the base could be on the map and go ahead and place a pal box there, but don't build it. Next, get on your flying mount and fly up to check your work. What you're looking for is you want to make sure that funky blue circle on the outside fully encompasses every resource in the area that you're looking to farm. Once I feel like I've found the center of any base, I always like to put a four square of stone with stairs on either side of it, just to make sure that I don't have any problem traversing it, that the pals don't have any issues traversing it as well, and it just offers a better, cleaner aesthetic if you're spending a lot of time on a base, you want it to look good. So this is something that I certainly implement in every one of my bases. So what do you actually need in terms of infrastructure? Well, let's take a quick tour. The first thing I did was build the living quarters. Now, what I did was I built a two-story building, being sure to have each wall at least two stone walls high so that my Jormantides and everything else that's a bigger pal can actually fit in here. I've got a medicine production bench, a repair bench, and then this table here is used for crafting all of the pal gear. Stop using the luxury pal beds. I mean, they look amazing, but they take up way too much space, and I haven't really noticed a difference in terms of pal performance that would impact the operation of your base. Stick with the middle of the line fluffy pal beds and you'll have everything you need with virtually no loss in performance. While we're here, let's go up to the second story to take a look at our production operation. I've got a production line for everything, including weapons, uh, additional items, sphere production. I also have over here a smelting machine so that I can smelt ingots and I am sure to have little chests next to those so I can grab high volumes of items and then just store them right away without having to feel like you're walking around like a dig toys waiting for your grappling hook to recharge. Over on this side I've got virtually the same setup here with the same smelting machine but over here I'm actually smelting pal metal ingots instead of regular ingots and that way you can have two different smelting operations going at the same time with a chest here respectively to store everything whenever you're over encumbered. I hid my electricity generator in this little pocket here as well as a little toolbox. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually build little items like this toolbox, the stump and axe and the pickaxe helmet, as well as a water fountain to help with efficiencies. The large toolbox helps with handiwork, the water fountain helps with watering speed, the stump and axe helps with logging speed, and the pickaxe and helmet helps with mining speed. I've seen other channels set these up in rows, but I personally subscribe to an open floor concept just because I think it looks more attractive. Just like how you look more attractive if you subscribe to the channel. I like this concept because you have plenty of room to organize your thoughts with all the different items you can produce all at once. And I also like the fact that whenever pals come up the stairs, they don't get stuck on anything to get to the production line. So this is just a very clean way of doing it. And I personally think it's the best way to do it. Moving along downstairs to the left in clockwise fashion, I've got both of my spas set up here. I would recommend the highest grade spa just to make sure that your pals have plenty of time to relax and that their sanity is replenished as quickly as you can possibly get it replenished. You're going to need a lumbering yard or at least a ton of trees because this base is also going to be used for creating charcoal and you smelt wood into charcoal 
up at the smelter. So go ahead and set up one of these and you're going to have everything you need moving forward from the charcoal department. I actually set up a ranch. Now, I'm not cooking cakes here, okay? I'm not cooking cakes, but I do put one pal here to create high quality cloth. And that pal, of course, is Sibilix. Now, if you don't know, Sibilix's partner skill is that sometimes it produces high quality cloth when assigned to a ranch. High quality cloth is a necessary ingredient for crafting all of the end game armor materials, whether it be legendary or just regular pal metal armor, heat resistant armor, cold metal armor. I like to stock up a bunch of the high quality cloth so that in case I have any buddies jump onto my server, I can go ahead and craft them the best armor so they can have that starting from level one. And maybe you can do the same. Moving on, I have actually two crushers here. Now, why do you need crushers well these paldium fragments are an end game item used for crafting spheres and other amazing items that you're going to need moving forward in the game so you're going to need a ton of these paldium fragments now maybe two crushers is a bit overkill you can start with one and taper it upwards if you need to but i went ahead and put my water fountain here to increase watering because these are created through watering i actually put two stone quarries here with the mining card on the right to increase mining efficiency and the reason i did this is because stone is actually what you need to put into the crusher to create the paldium fragments so i set this up this way so that i can come here collect 9999 turn over here collect 9999 and then go ahead and store them in the locker here and as you can see this has been extremely efficient for creating as many stones as i'll probably ever need moving along here to the agriculture side of things it has been tested that salad is an s tier pal food it has the highest sanity replacement value and also causes your pals to work faster and more efficiently. Because it's so good, you're going to want to make at least one lettuce plantation and at least one tomato plantation, just to make sure you have a steady income of materials needed for making salads. You don't need berries or flour here since you're not baking cakes, so just leave it at these two. Now, the easiest way to get yourself some tomato seeds and lettuce seeds would be to fast travel to the very bottom left portion of the map called Fisherman's Point. Go ahead and fast travel there. Once you get there, go up the steps here and you're going to be looking for a wandering merchant, but it's actually not this merchant. Make a quick left, go down to the end here, and you're actually going to be looking for the one that is dressed in all red. Once you see him, go ahead and talk to him, and in the kindest, nicest, most humane way, go ahead and purchase some lettuce seeds and some tomato seeds. Oh, he's got high-grade medical supplies and bones and horns you saw nothing and he's swift two three four okay so that's it for the overall infrastructure of the base itself and as you can see everything is nice and neat and orderly and all the pals have complete access to every ore node and there are no obstructions at all the first pal that you want to go after just to make the rest of your pal search go much easier and much smoother would be to find a jormantide ignis you want jormantide ignis because of its level four kindling ability the only problem is he's kind of difficult to get, but I have a way for you to get him early in the game. All you're going to need to get yourself Jormantide Ignis super early in the game is simply a flying mount and some heat resistance. As soon as level 9, you can craft yourself a tropical outfit to have level 2 heat resistance, which will prevent you from getting burned by the volcano. Simply jump on your flying mount, which is probably going to be Nightwing as your first flying mount at level 15, and you're going to want to go to the very southwest part of the map over here. I always like to start at the beach of Everlast summer what you're going to be looking for over here on this island is a huge dragon egg which is the black and purple egg pick up every egg that you see because once one of them spawns it never changes and the only way to get it to change is to pick up the existing egg so pick up every egg that you see and revisit here every couple days until you find yourself a huge dragon egg go back to your base incubate it and now you have yourself a Jormantide ignis this is probably the single most important thing to do early in the game because now you are are leagues and leagues ahead of all the competition. If you don't already have yourself a Tansy, go ahead and pick up one of these over here in the starting area and this location just southwest of Chillet because you're going to use that pal to get the next pal, which is the most broken farming pal in the entire game. Take the Jormantide Ignis that you just got and breed it with this little guy right here, Tansy. That is going to create for you a Patalia. Now all you have to do is travel to the Masanda Forest just south of the new base we built. Find yourself a Masanda and kindly invite it to come to your base with you forever. Breed that Patalia with Masanda to get the most broken farming pal in the entire game. Lilene is easily an S tier pal and is essential to have everything in terms of food production running at your base optimally. 
Be careful though, because if you were one of those naughty pal trainers that found a way to capture the tower boss, how did you get there? That Lylene, the tower boss Lylene, actually has worse efficiencies than one that you can either catch in the wild or breed for yourself. If you look here, this tower boss has three planting and two handiwork, and this normal Lylene has four planting and three handiwork. Definitely make sure you get yourself some normal Lylene, drop at least two of them in your base, and you're going to have everything you need for all of your planting, all of your gas gathering and all of your medicine production needs. If you wanted to have some fun, you could also capture Lylene at this sanctuary here in the very upper right hand corner of the map, but it is high level. It's a bit of a challenge, uh, but if you're up for it, you can certainly do it. It's very fun to catch them for your own in the wild. For watering, the absolute best S tier pal is going to be Jormantide. Similar to Jormantide Ignis's level 4 kindling, this Jormantide has level 4 watering, and it's the reason why everybody is after it to get their watering needs taken care of. Again, you're going to need watering for both the crushers to create paldium fragments, as well as watering all of your crops to make sure you have a sustainable food supply for all your pals. If you didn't know, you can actually get Jormantide super early, even as early as level 20, pretty easily by simply fast traveling down to the Ascetic Falls, just northeast of Fenglope here. As soon as you spawn in, turn around, get on your mount, and catch yourself a Relaxaurus as soon as you see one. Once you have that, go back to the fast travel point, and you're going to simply travel up to the Quivern. So, Sealed Realm of the Winged Tyrant here, just south of Quivern. Once you spawn in, look for the Jet Dragon statue and the circle with the glowing blue light. Simply enter the dungeon, and all you're gonna do is catch yourself this Quivern. Now all you have to do is breed that Quivern that you just caught with your Relaxaurus that you also just caught, and you'll have yourself a Jormantide, the best watering pal in the entire game. The only problem with Jormantide is that he gets stuck on literally everything. So if you find this to be a problem, just replace him with two Pen Kings until Pocket Pair fixes Jormantide's AI pathing. For electricity, just stick with a Jolt Hog. Jolt Hog is tiny, it doesn't get stuck on anything, it has no issues powering this thing up all by itself, and it only has level 1 generating electricity as a work suitability, so it's not going to get distracted with anything else. You might be tempted to use something like this Orzerk for generating electricity. This is my baby right here, he's got perfect passive skills, and he's maxed out, so he's got level 5 uh, generating electricity, but he's a little bit bigger than Jolt Hog, and he also has other other efficiencies that could potentially get in the way. I found that it's safer to have a small Jolt Hog to keep the power up in the base at all times, and you don't need something like an Orserk which could potentially be big enough to get stuck on other pals and create issues throughout the base. Now, before we get to the main pal for mining, production, and transport, I have to tell you something. I already know I'm going to get some spicy comments for this one, but don't waste your time with Dig Toys, because he's awful. And just be honest, do you really want to hear this all day in your base? No. And don't even think about wasting your time with Astagon because he's way too big. He gets stuck on everything and he farms all day and all night. So his sanity and hunger is just completely out of control. Don't get me wrong though. I use Astagon every day. Astagon is hands down the absolute best pal for manual farming in the entire game. Let me show you a little secret. What you want to do is farm up skill fruit trees until you find yourself lightning strike and teach it to Astagon. Your third base should be a complete throwaway and you don't need it because all you really need is a breeding base and the main base that I'm showing you today. So go ahead and place your third base all the way down here at these coordinates, negative 742, negative 447, and fast travel. Get yourself some heat resistant armor, throw down your Astagon, and stand about right here. Then cast Lightning Strike. And now you've got more sulfur than you'll need for a long time. To make it back up quickly, simply grapple to your pal box and fast travel. That's the quickest way to get 720 sulfur that you've ever seen, and that's why I always use Astagon as a manual farming pal rather than for a base pal. That being said, the absolute best endgame pal that you need to be shooting for is going to be, you guessed it, Anubis. Just use Anubis. He's easily the most broken pal in the entire game, hands down, and you want to get him as early as possible because he has level 4 handiwork. What this enables you to do is take something that would normally take 7 minutes and 33 seconds 
and build it almost instantly, as long as you have one with the right passive skills. You can use them for creating weapons and ammunition and crafting legendary spheres. The beautiful thing about Anubis is that yes, he has level four handiwork so he can craft anything in your base almost instantly, but he also has level three mining and level two transporting. This means that he can mine all of the ore nodes and all of the coal nodes, and he can also work the stone quarries, and he can transport everything that he mines into the boxes that you place around your base. Anubis is small enough to where he doesn't get stuck on any kind of geometry, and he runs so quickly, so he gets stuff done fast. And it's really easy to breed Anubis because all you need to do is simply use the Relaxaurus that we caught earlier in the video and then grab yourself a Cell Ray that is all over the starting location. Breed Cell Ray with Relaxaurus and you will have yourself your very own Anubis. And further, if you've seen my previous breeding guide and the breeding base that I built, you can build your own Anubis to have it suit your exact needs. So this one here has Sirius, which is work speed increased by 20%, Artisan, which is work speed increased by 50%, and Work Slave, which is increased by 30%. 30%. So you've got here a 50, 60, 70, 80, 100% work speed increase bonus on top of its already level five handiwork. I actually bred myself two different variants of Anubis for the base because I actually bet you didn't know this. Work speed does not work on actual ore nodes because it doesn't have a progress bar when your pals are attacking it. But where work speed does come in handy is in something that has a progress bar like this stone quarry. So the only reason this Anubis is mining so quickly is because its work speed is so insane. But if you take that same Anubis and put it on this ore, it is not not going to be mining nearly as fast. So work speed does not work for ores. But what some people are speculating is that attack actually has a better weight when it comes to farming ore nodes. And so what I did was I actually bred myself another Anubis to be more efficient with farming ore, assuming it attack actually does have an impact. This Anubis has almost double the attack of my previous Anubis. If you notice, this one here has 542 because it has a drawback from work slave. It reduces his attack by 30% at the expense of gaining 30 30% work speed, which again doesn't work on ore nodes. And this one here has over a thousand attack because his passives are as follows. Swift for increased movement speed. Artisan for work speed whenever I'm building stuff and I just need an extra hand. Legend, which gives you a plus 20% attack and a plus 15% movement speed. So he gets to and fro faster. And also Lucky, which increases work speed and attack. So this variation here makes him fast and strong, and it still doesn't sacrifice too much work speed. It's my theory that that Anubis is going to be best to assign to ore nodes and the other Anubis that have perfect passive skills for actually work speed. It's going to be best to assign these to the rock quarries, but there's still a little bit of testing that needs to happen. But again, breeding yourself the perfect Anubis with the perfect passive skills is not entirely necessary. It's going to be faster if you do what I did, but you're going to be just fine if you take your Relaxaurus and breed it with Cell Ray and create for yourself an army of Anubis. For the logging site, I've searched to and fro, and I've actually come to the conclusion that the absolute best logger is going to be Ike Theardeer, simply for the fact that it only has level two lumbering and it won't be distracted with anything else. I've seen other loggers that have higher stats, but they're either too fat and get in the way, or they get distracted with transporting and they don't actually cut down lumber. So I would rather have Ike Theardeer on the logging site at all times instead of have a Wumpo or Wumpo Baton just rolling around the base, getting in the way and blocking other pals. Another pal that you could consider putting in is gonna be Blazamud. He actually has level three kindling, which is amazing. And he also has level four mining. I actually prefer to use a Blazamud in the base because if you remember, I have two different machines here to smelt ingots and it could be helpful to have Jormantide Ignis up here cooking one and Blazamud over here cooking the other. And then as soon as the Blazamud finishes cooking, it can go down and help the Anubis with mining. Now, if I had my preference, I would just fill my entire base with the Anubis and have them destroy all these ore nodes and have them do all the transporting and everything. But if you do play on a dedicated server and you notice that ore is just being left on the ground and they almost can't transport it fast enough, something that I would recommend doing is filling your base with at least two Hell Zephyrs. Now, why do I say that? Hell Zephyr only has level three transporting, so it will not get distracted with anything else. It's also a flyer, so it doesn't get stuck on geometry and it's nocturnal, so it's gonna be working through the night. If you find that your base is dirty and you've got ore everywhere and your Anubis are doing a great job of creating the ore and mining it, but they can't transport it, go ahead and throw two Hell Zephyrs into your base and you're going to be well on your way to spick and span floors. Now that all that's been said, let's go ahead and place our pals into the base. 
Small oversight, mistakes were made. All you need is one rock quarry or else you're gonna have six Anubis farming the same thing. Okay, so these Anubis are making quick work of each of these ore nodes. Looks like they're going around and just destroying them. And then the Hell's Efforts are transporting. And as soon as they finish clearing everything out, they're going to get to transporting as well. So this, this looks like a really good operation. Last thing I forgot to mention is you're going to want to make sure that you don't blow up your base with your Jet Dragon, but you place Salads in here in the very leftmost slot, just so that all your pals can come to a centrally located area, get food, and then get back to work. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.